So now uh, I should talk about CERN and an anti-miracle. Uh, I have written here LHC, but LHC is just the biggest machine and the most important machine at this institution CERN in uh, Geneva, which is paid by taxpayers of, uh, of many European countries. So, uh, among which Denmark, for instance. And uh, this um, CERN has just got this machine working essentially last week. We, uh, we were celebrating by champagne and so that this machine had now come up to really work with three TEV. And now I owe you to tell TEV that's sort of a, um, a mosquito energy. So it's very small. <laughs> but it's very big on the scale of the, a single proton, of which we have uh, 6 times 10 to the uh, 23 in one gram. That's very, very much if you give that energy that is comparable to a mosquito. So it's an enormously big energy for that. And this is a record. And now the machine is working. And, uh, and it, it is uh, uh, very uh, great things because the theoretical and experimental high energy physicists have been waiting and waiting for years to, uh, to get the machine work. And I think somehow theoreticians have worked into more and more speculative things because we have lacked experiments because there has been a very long time before this machine has come up. And this is a little bit due to that we think that there is a kind of God against it. <laughs> and, uh, and that is a theory of uh, Masao Ninomiya and myself. And that is what has to do with this concept of anti-miracle. We want to say that machines which produce a particle called Higgs, which is to be produced by LHC. So far, I don't think it produced any. But that will come. That will come. At least uh, one didn't see it. One didn't see any produced Higgs at all. Also not by a smaller machine, which probably has produced about 10,000 or so. But we really don't know because we didn't see any. So, <laughs> yeah, we, we can put this. Yeah, so I am, uh, this machine is called Large Hadron Collider. And large, of course, is just big. And collider means that you, uh, you collide things against each other. And hadron is a somewhat screwed notation for the proton which is shooted. You should know that we are made from, let us say, uh, we are made from protons and, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, um, electrons and so on. I think you, you, you know what we are made from, but to be completely safe, yeah, you can see we are made from cells and so on, but don't forget about that. Then we are made from atoms. And here is sort of a symbolic drawing, which is in a way the picture by Niels Bohr of the atom. And uh, inside the middle, in the middle of the atom, there is the nucleus, and that consists of protons and neutrons, so-called nucleons. And uh, around it goes the electrons, and they are going in such orbits. But I think according to modern quantum mechanics, they are in mysterious way different places around the atom at the same time. But, uh, but that we don't have to think so much about uh, in, in the first go. That is quantum mechanics. Now at least you have heard the word quantum mechanics which is uh, what the theory which we are working on all the time. So in a way we should know that, but uh, I think I will try to escape it in a, in a relatively short talk. But you should have in mind that we have this mysterious theory that the 
creators of the theory didn't like it and complained about it. For instance, Einstein had very famous complaints. But uh, then we have this uh, nucleon, uh, no, we have this uh, uh, nucleus, and it consists of these so called nucleons, neutron and proton, which are called with a common name nucleons. And, uh, and, and that is, so to speak, a class of particles consisting of proton and neutron. But then there is a bigger class of particles that is called hadrons. And that contains the neutrons and the protons and a lot of other particles, which I um, already told you. There are some called pions. There are some called, uh, what? Yeah, that's, for instance, written here. Yes. <laughs> there are written some names of, of uh, hadrons, uh, this class of particles. There's, as you can see, the proton, there's a neutron, there's a pi minus, pi plus, pi zero, k meson, k minus, k zero, lambda, blah, 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 blah. There are so many that we have a whole little book about them. And uh, <coughs> these particles are actually produced in uh, collisions of, for instance, protons. Then you produce a lot of hadrons, uh, and uh, the proton is itself a hadron, and you also produce sometimes protons, as you can see, uh, if you collide protons on protons. And very seldomly, you produce other particles than hadrons. And now, since I'm saying hadron is a class, I have to tell you that there is at least one particle which you should uh, know because I mentioned the electron going around in the atom, which is not a hadron. So, electron is not a hadron, but pions, kaons, proton, neutron are hadrons. And now one calls it that one is shooting hadrons, but it is in a bay a little bit. Uh, Strange, because this is like I would say, I am talking to mammals. Because there are lots of mammals here listening, but you are all from the same type. In the same way, you shoot these protons, and it is all protons in the hadron collider. But they are, of course, hadrons, because that's also the proton. So, but it is to make sure that it is not the electron, because one had another machine electron-positron collider, which collided <coughs> electrons, and that <coughs> is, a, is another type of machine. So this is different. Anyway, so this is the, um, uh, this is the uh, hadrons. And then I, I should talk about this anti-miracle. And the anti-miracle which I think is the best anti-miracle, the most mysterious happening, which could be like seeing a miracle, like seeing Jesus go on the water or so. Uh, uh, that is that there was another Hadron Collider machine. And this machine was called SSC. And uh, it doesn't really matter what this SSC was, but since I'm now mentioning it, I should say that it is, uh, uh, it is a meaning superconducting super collider. So this SSC means uh, superconducting super collider. Superconducting super collider. And that is because these machines use superconducting, uh, 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 they, they have the current running in superconducting, and then it was very big, and it was therefore a super collider. In a way, it was too big, because that should have had, uh, that should be a very big ring. Uh, 40 something kilometers, very, very big. And then there should go protons one way and other hadron proton another way, I think. And then they should go with 20 of these uh, TV units, which is very big because this 
uh, machine we now started, that goes after plan with 7 TV against 7 TV. So this SSC would have been about three times as big in energy. So it would have been very big and now you hear I say it would have been because it never finished. It was stopped after a quarter of the tunnel was built. A very strange thing. I mean, it is very bad economy that you spend millions of dollars and make a big effort to build a big machine and build a quarter of the tunnel under the earth like a metro uh, 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 tunnel and then you stop it and all the money are in some way wasted and it's very bad decision for <coughs> Congress of United States to do but they did it and it is so stupid that you would almost say this was miraculous. <laughs> this shouldn't happen naturally. <laughs> but it's of course a very bad thing. So probably it should be called then an anti-miracle. And now I have explained the content of this series. Now you should understand that the main point of our work, my work with Masaun Inumiya, uh, which uh, I shall tell you about before the talk is finished. You should hopefully have learned at least the main idea. Uh, that is that we, according to this theory, we could have predicted that this machine would have had bad luck. We didn't do it because we invented the theory many years after it had the bad luck. But we invented the theory before LHC had bad luck. But LHC has not yet had severe bad luck. It had some bad luck one and a half year ago. And it is only starting up now. So if our theory should be fulfilled, it has better go in bad luck rather soon. <laughs> so it has to be stopped rather soon. But it is not looking like it will be because it is going extremely well with this machine. But we can of course still claim, yeah, few months we can give it and so on and we can try to estimate uh, uh, how, it, uh, how much it could have perhaps. Or we can adjust our parameters. But at least, well, what we should say is about the particle called the Higgs. And I think I must, uh, mm, I must uh, mention uh, about the particle Higgs you must have in mind from the start. This machine, LHC and also SSC, this is looking for a particle called the Higgs boson. And since this plays the major role in the theory of Masao and mine, I, I think you should notice this name of the Higgs particle, called after a Scotch a Scottish physicist, Higgs. Uh, so, uh, this Higgs boson is a particle one has not yet seen. So, it's not seen yet. Nobody has seen it. Well, I believe they are somebody saw it. But nobody else <laughs> believes that they have seen it. And, um, and this Higgs particle is a great thing that the LHC shall produce it. So, the great LHC machine shall produce Higgs. This is in a way what it is geared to do, but it is geared to work for many years, so it won't produce Higgs so that we will see it very quickly. We have to be a bit patient before the Higgs will come out of the LHC machine, but it will come. And we don't, you should also have in mind, it is producing much more Higgses than the physicist can discover. So it will be a lot of Higgses produced which we don't see and a few we will somehow manage to see or rather we will only see it statistically. We have to make statistics and we never know that what we see something that looks like a Higgs whether it is a Higgs or not, but we, if we see 
sufficiently many times something that looks like a Higgs, then maybe it is a Higgs, or we conclude it is a Higgs. This is the kind of spirit one has to do. So now I think I should talk a little bit about uh, this uh, machine, LHC, and at least put a, a, a picture in a way that you can say you have seen some, uh, something from the Higgs. It looks a little bit dark, but you can see. And it is 150 to 150 meters under the ground. And uh, the main thing is this tunnel here which is a sort of metro tunnel uh, under the earth between uh, France and Canton Geneva, where the machine is built. And the machine is, uh, is very extended. It is 27 kilometers long. And you can, for instance, show it by uh, showing. There's nothing to see on the on the uh, uh, top of the earth, but here is some photograph from the air of the region, and I think this is Geneva Airport lying there uh, to give a scale of the size. But you know this ring is 27 kilometers big. So it is uh, a complicated landscape, and I have lived there, and it is a, a very nice region. And um, the border between uh, Geneva or Switzerland and, uh, pra pra and France is uh, uh, crossing around and actually crosses uh, this line several times. But the line, nothing is to be seen because it is 150 uh, to 150 meters under the ground and it is uh, just drawn here uh, by red afterwards so you know where it is. Um, and, uh, and here is again a picture of the tunnel. And if you note it very carefully, the, uh, the picture I just showed you, then you will discover that on this picture there is a slightly different machine. Because there was earlier a machine that was shooting with electrons which were not hadrons, and this somewhat different machine and different magnets, more weak magnets were there and they, uh, they uh, were used for these electrons which for technical reasons you give them less strong magnetic fields because if you give them strong they lose the energy and it is no use to do it anyway. So, but for the hard ones you can better do it. And, uh, and this is uh, uh, what you have, yeah, this is not, this is the same picture just with some, put on some machines and I will talk a little bit about one of these machines, which is called Alice, where the, uh, uh, the protons running, there are two tubes of protons running one way and the other, and they hit each other at organized places where there are very big uh, experiments organized and so. So, uh, but, but uh, uh, this is... Uh, uh, what uh, this is basically what this uh, machine is doing. Yeah, you can see here on the other pictures. You see uh, some photographs uh, uh, before these instruments were fully developed. You you have some region here with a lot of instruments, mesh uh, to uh, also magnets to to guide and to measure the particles that come out when two protons collide head on. They, they, they split into a lot of, of, of particles like I, uh, like I showed. They go mainly into hadrons and, and then you look for what these hadrons are by instruments which are filling big regions. I mean, a human being is such a little small one here. It's really very big instruments. So I think like my finger or so here. Would, would be the height of a human being on this scale. Uh, and this is another instrument, CMS and so on. So you have uh, these uh, instruments, and uh, now I am in 
I, I think the plan of my talk is approximately this. And uh, I have already told you about this uh, LHC, what sort of machine it is, more or less. And it is uh, making records in many ways. There's the uh, uh, biggest uh, cooled region uh, down there to cool these magnets. And you have uh, uh, empty space where the proton run is about the best empty space in the solar system. But outside the solar system, it's even more empty. It's very, very empty out there. So it's very difficult to, to compete with that, even for the people in LHC. Uh, I had some meeting with the Danes working there, and then one of the Danes, when I asked him, what are you doing? He said, uh, which means, I do nothing. But that meant he was doing the vacuum, making this <laughs> empty thing. So uh, uh, this is uh, um, the thing. If you, now the machine is working, but but really, and it even worked a little bit before Christmas. But then it was stopped in Christmas, and then it is working up. And now, since last week, it's working on half the plant energy. And perhaps there is a little uh, God uh, e effect has organized it only to go half. Maybe the God of our theory don't like to do it uh, full speed. Well, I think this is not to be taken too seriously. But it means that, <laughs> that one, can, uh, one has measured something with this low energy, which is not so impressive because it's essentially what one did with the previous machine. But now one is doing it proton on proton. The previous did it proton on antiproton. All particles have antiparticles. So sometimes the particle is its own antiparticle, for instance, the light particle, the photon. But the proton has an antiparticle, which is another particle than the proton. And in the foregoing machine uh, in CERN region, uh, one, one had this. But, but now one measured one. One cannot see everything that goes in, in this uh, uh, very forward direction. You, you have this empty space. And, and you better not fill it with too many detectors, because then, uh, then you stop the particle. So you have to be a little careful. There, there are some problems there, but they can be partly solved. But the particles that come out in a reasonably big angle, those you can see, and those you can measure. And therefore, if you want to measure how many particles there really come out, you, you cannot really measure them all because you can't measure the ones coming just in forward direction or just backwards when they come, so to speak, follow the protons. But you can measure the ones that come to the side. And here is some little result of this one to show that at least one has done some data and one, can, one is now working. And they have published it and so on. So it's a great thing. Referee has accepted it. It's from, yeah, OK. And then there's this uh, pseudo rapidity, which is a kind of longitudinal velocity. But I don't think a logarithm of it. Uh, uh, it is not so important to, to, to know all these logarithms. So now I have uh, to say uh, about uh, what is our model, Nino Mies and mine. And, uh, and I can. Uh, I, I think I could uh, draw some uh, figures about what we are doing, but I think I, it would be a little bit, uh, a, a little bit just uh, almost painting in, instead of formulas. But there is one formula I would like to present as a kind of painting, because I don't think that I would even believe myself that I would make you understand it in 45 minutes. <laughs> but, uh, but this is the so-called Feynman pass integral. And Feynman is, uh, uh, is American physicist. Uh, uh, and he made this, which means he didn't really do it. Because <laughs> the, the truth is that it is due to one guy which is called Wenzel. 
and he invented you see this is a quantum mechanics formula but he invented it before quantum mechanics but well okay so he in a way invented quantum mechanics before the other people who were more successful in getting recognized to have made the quantum formalism but he invented this formalism which then and then it wasn't even uh, even Feynman but it was actually Dirac so <laughs> anyway but this is just not so important historical details and um, and and the, the formula I, I give very simplified uh, thing because it's a bit uh, tricky uh, what to do uh, and here uh, this is what is called pass I may call it history because I have called it history and some other transparencies uh, and it is really a, a sort history and now uh, I should say that this is a functional integral and, and maybe there are some people for whom even an integral ordinary way is <laughs> is somewhat a murky concept but I think that some people know what an integral is and that is if you have some function as a function of x then I can make an area under the function and this area is an integral I think some people know that <laughs> anyway but then if you have uh, if, you, if your variable x is replaced by a kind of function, you call it a functional instead, and it is more complicated. And, and this variable x is in a sense replaced by the history you could think about of the universe. So it's a kind of, I mean, an integral is of course a kind of sum, I hope you know, because you, 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 to get this R, you take a lot of small representative values, and then you sum the function for this, and then you by a little normalization you get, the, you get the integral and the integral you know is represented by this this is the way you write an integral normally but then by analogy to that and then to stress it's a functional you put another d and, and this is just the integral and this is the replacement for f and this is some formula and this e is 2,7 1828 uh, the neighbor logarithm and this i is the very uh, important uh, thing which I want to discuss is square root of minus 1 and I think that most of you know <laughs> that this doesn't exist that square root of minus 1 doesn't exist because you can't the square of all normal real numbers is positive and minus 1 is negative and therefore cannot have a square root but I think also most of you anyway know that you formally play with such square root of minus 1 and then you say now we are playing with complex numbers and if you have this i which is a square root of minus 1 in your formula then of course there's no doubt that your formula is somehow written with complex numbers because otherwise it is meaningless so of course you have complex numbers in your, in your formula but then it is very mysterious normal people assume that this so-called action this is called the action this quantity here this action is supposed to be real but now you see how strange to assume this is real when the formula is anyway going to involve complex very strongly therefore you might I mean this was hoped to be an aesthetical which means very weak sort of artistic point that this is not very reasonable but rather a strong assumption to say that this action is real but that is what all the physicists normally do so they assume the action in the Feynman pass integral due to Dirac and Wenzel is a real number but not complex but Ninumia and I we assume it to be complex this is I want to say this is a little bit suggestive by the story here but it's very little suggested but anyway whether it's suggested or not we assume that it is complex and then we get 
some effects out of this. And I think you might understand if you can see this algebra. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> what does it mean that it is complex? I don't think I should go into this algebra so much. But this is something like that you have an I times an so-called imaginary part. And if this imaginary part is multiplied with this i is multiplied by this i. i times i is minus 1, so you get e to the minus this i. And if you know the exponential, when you have something, and this h bar, which is Planck constant, that's supposedly very small. Because that is so small that in daily life, we consider it almost going to zero, because then we get classical physics instead of normal, <coughs> instead of quantum physics. But anyway, anyway, I, I don't think I shall. Uh, go much more into that, except to say that the bigger this SI is, the smaller is this, and therefore the less important. So the most important in the whole thing will be when the SI is the smallest, which means most negative. And that leads to a suggestion for a sort of formula for the will of God. Because, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, let me say that this will of God is, uh, is this formula here. This was the imaginary part of the action. And I have not really told you what action is, because I've just mentioned this Dirac formalism in which you can use the action. But so indirectly I told, but very indirectly. Uh, and, and then I said that what is important must be histories for which this function of a history. So you should think of a functional of a history. You should think that I could write a formula which I avoid writing for you, uh, uh, but which would say whenever I have a history, I can calculate a number. Or rather, I can calculate two numbers, a real and an imaginary part. And then I could say, now the true history of the universe, selected by God, in quotation mark, is the one that gives the smallest number for this one. So now you would have a rule according to which you would know how to start the universe in order to play off the history that would give the minimal value. It's a little bit analogous to that you say that this God who leads the universe, he is like a director of a company, and he tries on his computer to evaluate different scenarios for how things can develop through all history, and then he finds out some of them will give deficits, some will give bigger deficits, some will give perhaps a negative deficit, and then he chooses that history of the company if he can, and, uh, but he can. He is uh, almost like a god. He's here. Uh, then he chooses that history that gives the best benefit, the, which means the most negative deficit. And this SI is supposed to be like the deficit, so he tries to make the SI so small as possible by adjusting the history of the universe. This is a kind of will of God, because he really is very similar to a human will, because it is like wanting to get a certain achievement, namely this minimal deficit, this minimal SI. And that means then that all events that would cause a lot of contribution to the SI, which is positive, he would hate them and avoid them for any price. So if there is some contributions that are very big to this SI, he will hate it and will try to avoid it. And now the suggestion is that Higgs particles are of this kind. So he hates the Higgs particle. But the Higgs particle is the thing one has built the LHC to produce. So conclusion would be that this got in quotation mark in order to minimize his analog to the deficit SI would 
do all he can to avoid having the LHC run so that it produces many hexes. He will try to stop it before it has produced too many hexes. Oh, a few hexes, okay, half a million, <laughs> but nothing important, not very many. And that was what he, uh, what he did in the case of the SSC, which I mentioned. You remember the SSC was, uh, uh, was the uh, uh, was the superconducting supercollider. I didn't uh, tell it was in Texas, but it was actually built in Texas, and uh, it was built one quarter of the tunnel or so, and then it was stopped by the Congress. So this got in quotation mark. What would he have done? He would have seen that this was a very bad machine because it would produce a lot of Higgses, so stop it. And then he did arrange things in a clever way, whatever he could find that could help it. Maybe he called on Gorbachev or somebody <laughs> so that he could, he could make the, uh, the Soviet Union collapse and competing machines in the Soviet Union get hopeless for several years and then uh, we made it a little bit more expensive, a few uh, milliards uh, 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 more expensive, and then uh, the Congress gave up and stopped the machine. Uh, because then competition was not so good anymore, and it had even got more expensive. It was still great science, but, oh, I mean, most of the Congress didn't even hear my talk now. So, so, so they might not really know. Uh, uh, so that would be uh, the, uh, the problem. And then it was stopped. And this was, in a way, an anti-miracle. It was then confirmation or support of our theory. So we would consider its support. Now it, uh, it turns out that... Uh, the LHC should also be killed now, of course, because it will also produce fixes. And one and a half year ago, there was a kind of a bad luck for it because, because there was a, a, a happening. One, one had almost started it, in, or one had started it, but the particles were only running with energy is corresponding to the foregoing machine. I, I think you might, uh, maybe it's good to have in mind that this machine is uh, this large hadron collider. Uh, here I have a sort of uh, symbolic drawing of this circle again, which is a 27 kilometers. But then you have to put in the protons and you should uh, put them in already with some speed because if they don't have high speed when they come in, they are much more difficult to control and you will, they will not function in the way the machine is adjusted. It's adjusted only when they have high speed already. So you take the foregoing machine, which is called SPS, you speed them up to the highest one you could do on the CERN region in Geneva, and, um, and then you pump them over from there and then you should speed them up again. Uh, but first you have to make them run. And, and that one managed to do, but then happened bad accident. And uh, uh, there are superconducting uh, 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 conductors. And they have zero resistance, but they don't quite have zero resistance. Where you glue them together, there is a little resistance. And if... Uh, this resistance is a little bit too big. It's very, very small, nano, it's extremely small, but it's there. And you put big currents through, then it gets heated up. And when it's superconducting, it's no longer superconducting when it gets heated. And, and then something happens. And then something happens just a few uh, weeks before one was to celebrate the, oh, one was to celebrate uh, uh, that now machine was working and my collaborator Ninu Mia and 
all the great people from the different countries were called there to, to celebrate and so on. But, uh, but uh, then a few weeks before, uh, there was some heating there and there came an explosion and there was a big uh, uh, light of, 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 uh, from current there and the, 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 the helium which should cool the machine and which is, is minus 271 degree, which means 2 Kelvin, is, was boiled of course and, the, and, and there was a big explosion and even if the, if, if the, if the security machinery is worked, it couldn't take it all and, and there was a, a spoiling of a bit of the tunnel and, and one had to repair and then one found out that one had not checked well enough all the other places around the 27 and then at the end when one finally had gone, there was gone more than one year to return. So it was delayed more than one year. So this God in quotation mark, he postponed it for one year. And then he managed to make it half, half size, so not so many hexes as if at full size, uh, full uh, speed, 7 TV plus 7 TV, but only 3 and a half plus 3 and a half. And, uh, and that's uh, the situation. And now it started again. But if our theory should be right, it should better stop soon. Uh, and uh, okay, maybe we can give it a few months or so, especially if it runs with this lower energy and lower intensity and so on, lower luminosity. Yeah, here we see some of the news. Here is a guilty part. Uh, it is, yeah, you can't see very well, but it is some part here which is show that was the guilty part. So, Right. I have a feeling I should almost conclude. Yeah, what? Five ah, okay. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah, this was a plan. It's not so crucial. Uh, I have already talked about it. Uh, and I have given an idea of the, uh, of the, thing and I have given an idea about the Feynman. So I should probably uh, uh, just uh, uh, more or less conclude that we have uh, uh, we have uh, uh, Yes. Um, we, uh, ha I have talked about this LHC machine at CERN that started, and I have told that one shoots there uh, 3,5 of this uh, uh, terra electron volt. Uh, I could, uh, to be uh, sure, I could uh, remind uh, or mention that this terra electron volt, so that you know it, one terra electron volt is 10 to the 12th electron volt, which means 1 million million electron volt. Um, and uh, I think you call it trillion in, in some English, but I hate to use that because in, in, in Danish it is billion, which means milliard in English. So it's very confusing to talk about this if you don't know what language you're talking. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, a million million uh, electron volt. And an electron volt is the energy that one elementary charge gets when it goes through one volt. So if electron goes uh, through the net on 220 volt, it gets 220 electron volt. So, uh, so this is the Ele a terra electron volt, and you put on each of the proton for the moment three and a half of those the one way and three and a half the other, and the total collision gets then seven because it's three and a half plus three and a half. Um, and then I mentioned 
uh, some instrument. Alice, for which uh, the Niels Bohr Institute is very much involved, it's involved both in Alice and in, in uh, Atlas. Uh, but uh, in Alice, one is, Alice instrument is actually one that is especially gained when you shoot also, not with protons, but with whole nuclei, lead nuclei or so, against lead nuclei or gold nucleus, uh, go, uh, against gold nucleus and so on. So then this Alice should be very good at measuring a lot of particles. And that may be that it is therefore rather good at measuring how many particles you have and so on. And that's one of the first things one gets out of this instrument. If I'm allowed to measure one of the things myself, uh, uh, there is something called KNO scaling, which is uh, a law for how the distribution of the number of particles develop when you go up in energy. And this is called after Kober, Nielsen, and Olesen. Nielsen is me, and Olesen <laughs> is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but un uh, unfortunately, in a way, already the little machine, which was called SPS, which was the last machine to put it in, found out that Kober, Nielsen, Olesen scaling was not right. So it's already <laughs> false. <right. laughs> yeah, so it's already falsified. And uh, now the successful working is falsifying mine and Ninomir's uh, model about that these machines shall have bad luck. So this is another model that has bad luck. And, uh, and, and this is a bad sign that it is working. But it is a good sign uh, that it was delayed one year, <laughs> as I already mentioned. And there are a couple of other good signs. Well, the, the one good sign, which was the main anti miracle, that was this machine called SSC, Superconducting Super Collider, which had the bad luck of being closed completely by the Congress before it worked at all. And this was in 1993. And it had something like two, uh, 21 kilometers of ton. And then, yeah, then there was this half. And then uh, 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 John Ellis uh, uh, wrote, but I think it was other people who found out, that in a way, if these Hickses were hated so much as they should be, by the God that governs the world, in quotation marks. Then, uh, the cosmic ray, which is that particles come in from the universe and hit the atmosphere and produces particles. It should not produce Higgses, because it is not good, because then you produce much more Higgses than LHC and all these machines together. So it's very bad, and it is very bad. But of course, nobody knows how difficult it would be to switch off these uh, cosmic rays of a very high energy that can produce Higgses, because they have to have even more high energy than what you produce uh, them in the, in the LHC, because you are hitting the atmosphere uh, where you have atom, uh, atoms which are at rest, approximately. So you need much more energy. You don't have. In, in the LHC, you collide like this. Two com collide on each other. Head-on collision. But if you come cosmic ray to hit an, a, a nucleus of nitrogen or oxygen in the atmosphere, it comes along and the other is at rest. So it has to go with much bigger, not speed so much, just a little bit bigger speed, because they all go with speed of light. But it has to go with bigger energy to cause the same effect. But then, very interestingly, it is cosmic ray that is so high in energy that it would produce Higgses. There's nothing to do about that. It is true. But there is a funny kink. There is a kink in the sense that when you come to an energy where you begin to produce the Higgses, then the, cost, the, the curve describing how much cosmic radiation there comes goes much deeper down. So it is as if it falls down when, when you come to the place. So it is as if there is an effect 
that these ones which could produce Higgs uh, gets cut away much quicker as a function of the energy. So when you go up in energy, they disappear rather quickly. So they're much less than they would have been by a simple extrapolation. So in some way, they were removed. So you see a, a slight support for the idea. <laughs> and, this is <laughs> and, and this is called the knee, because the curve comes to look <coughs> like, like a leg with a knee. Here you have the, 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 the normal, <laughs> and then it goes down. <laughs> right. And, uh, and that is funny that this is very close to, to this place. And uh, this is then some evidences for it. There's also the little problem that there is already a machine in Chicago that produces Higgses, but nobody saw them because they're difficult to see. So they produce Higgses and probably have produced 5,000 or whatever. Uh, but uh, they probably produced them, but really we don't know. But then we have to say, ah, but we put a parameter in our theory, and it is only when it is enough many we, we get this effect. So maybe if we have less than half a million, it is not a problem. But at least we should not put the parameter so that we lose our best miracle which was the SSC machine, because then we lose all evidence for our theory. <laughs> and, and, and that would, of course, be, a, uh, be very bad. So we must live with, with that. So, uh, but now you can listen and, and hear. And if you don't hear within some months that accident actually happened or so, then it's not so good for our theory. But of course, theory should be falsifiable. Uh, so really, they are not usually falsifiable, such theories, because you, you can play around with the parameters. But more and more, you have to give it crutches and help it and so on and say, oh, we put the parameter up and so on. And finally, it is effectively, effectively falsified. And this one is going to be effectively falsified, probably at the end of the year or before. I mean, <laughs> uh, so, uh, so that is the sort of situation. And, uh, yeah, and then, of course, I can tell that, uh, of course, you can now expect that, uh, that in a way, I, uh, I would be nastily hoping something bad to happen, because it's nice to have your theory be successful. But you see, it is also nice to have a working LHC. Because then you get wonderful theories that can test other theories of yours, uh, which, uh, uh, which is nice to do. For instance, I have a bound state, which I would like to get found. And, and if it doesn't work, it's not easy to find any bound state with it. So it's very important to, uh, to get it work also. Uh, so uh, so I'm, I'm more balanced. <laughs> Yes, whereas perhaps to some extent uh, colleagues might be less ba balanced because it's very sad. They have no consolation if, if it goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and in a similar way with respect to the Higgs being found, some people are thinking that it is very dull if you just find the Higgs and not much more new stuff. But that's, in a way, what some of the theorists I believe most would, would give. So that would be a little victory and also be consolating. Whereas, otherwise, this finding the Higgs and nothing else, that is sometimes called the rosner Birkin nightmare, because uh, uh, Rosner and Birkin find that it's almost a nightmare, because one hopes to find new theories to be true. And I must tell in the last second uh, that uh, one of the theories one can hope to be true, that is superstring theory, for which I claim to be a father, together with Nambu and such kind. And, uh, but I'm perhaps a bad father because I don't trust it very much. <laughs> but therefore, it could be true anyway. And this is what is uh, hoped or is possible that LHC <coughs> may find it before it finds the Higgs. And if the superstring theory is true, 
probably one should find five Higgses as not just one. So there, there is something very interesting, and one should find supersymmetric partners. Uh, but uh, so it, it, it will also be either supported or perhaps falsified, but you can always give it crutches. So, <laughs> uh, so it's not so catastrophic either. But as big in energy. So it would have been very big and now you hear I say it would have been because it never finished. It was stopped after a quarter of the tunnel was built. A very strange thing. I mean it is very bad economy that you spend milliards of dollars and make a big effort to build a big machine and build a quarter of the tunnel under the earth, like a metro uh, 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 tunnel. And then you stop it. And all the money are in some way wasted. And it's very bad decision <coughs> for Congress of United States to do. But they did it. And it is so stupid that you would almost say, this was miraculous. <laughs> this shouldn't happen naturally. But it's of course a very bad thing. So probably it should be called then an anti-miracle. And now I have explained the content of this series. Now you should understand that the main point of our work, my work with Masao Ninumiya, uh, which uh, I shall tell you about before the talk is finished. You should hopefully have learned at least the main idea. Uh, that is that we, according to this theory, we could have predicted that this machine would have had bad luck. We didn't do it because we invented the theory many years after it had the bad luck. But we invented the theory before LHC had bad luck. But LHC has not yet had severe bad luck. It had some bad luck one and a half year ago. And it is only starting up now. So if our theory should be fulfilled, it has better go in bad luck rather soon. <laughs> so it has to be stopped rather soon. But it is not looking like it will be because it is going extremely well with this machine. But we can of course still claim, yeah, few months we can give it and so on and we can try to estimate uh, uh, how, it, uh, how much it could have, perhaps. Uh, or we can adjust our parameters. But at least, well, what we should say is about the particle called the Higgs. And I think I must, uh, mm, I must uh, mention uh, about the particle Higgs you must have in mind from the start. This machine, LHC and also SSC, this is looking for a particle called the Higgs boson. And since this plays the major role in the theory of Masao and mine, I, I think you should notice this name of the Higgs particle, called after a, Scotch, a, a Scottish physicist, Higgs. Uh, so uh, this Higgs boson is a particle one has not yet seen. So it's not seen yet. Nobody has seen it. Well, I believe they are somebody saw it. But nobody else <laughs> believes that they have seen it. <laughs> and, um, and this Higgs particle is a great thing that the LHC shall produce it. So the great LHC machine shall produce Higgs. This is in a way what it is geared to do 
but it is geared to work for many years, so it won't produce Higgs's so that we will see it very quickly. We have to be a bit patient before the Higgs's will come out of the LHC machine, but it will come. And we don't, you should also have in mind, it is producing much more Higgs's than the physicist can discover. So, it will be a lot of Higgs's produced which we don't see and a few we will somehow manage to see or rather we will only see it statistically. We have to make statistics and we never know that what we see something that looks like a Higgs, whether it is a Higgs or not, but we, if we see sufficiently many times something that looks like a Higgs, then maybe it is a Higgs or we conclude it is a Higgs. This is the kind of spirit one has to do. So, now I think I should talk a little bit about uh, this uh, machine LHC and at least put a, a, a picture in a way that you can say you have seen some, uh, something from the Higgs. It looks a little bit dark but you can see and it is 150 to 150 meters under the ground. And uh, the main thing is this tunnel here, which is a sort of metro tunnel uh, under the earth between uh, France and Canton Geneva, where the machine is built. And the machine is, uh, is very extended, it is 27 kilometers long, and you can, for instance, show it by uh, showing there's nothing to see on the on the uh, top of the earth but here is some photograph from the air of the region and I think this is Geneva Airport lying there uh, to give a scale of the size but you know this ring is 27 kilometers big so it is uh, a complicated landscape and I have lived there and it is uh, a very nice region and um, the border between uh, Geneva or Switzerland and, uh, pra pra and France is uh, uh, crossing around and actually crosses uh, this line several times. But the line, nothing is to be seen because it is 150 uh, to 150 meters under the ground and it is uh, just drawn here uh, by red afterwards, so you know where it is. Um, and, uh, and here is again a picture of the tunnel. And if you note it very carefully, the, uh, the picture I just showed you, then you will discover that on this picture there is a slightly different machine. Because there was earlier a machine that was shooting with electrons which were not hadrons, and this somewhat different machine and different magnets, more weak magnets were there and they, uh, they uh, were used for these electrons which for technical reasons you give them less strong magnetic fields because if you give them strong they lose the energy and it is no use to do it anyway. So, but for the hard ones you can better do it. And, uh, and this is... Uh, uh, what you have, yeah, this is not, this is the same picture just with some, put on some machines. And I will talk a little bit about one of these machines, which is called Alice, where the, uh, uh, the protons running, there are two tubes of protons running one way and the other, and they hit each other at organized places where there are very big uh, experiments organized and so. So, uh, but but uh, uh, this is uh, uh, what uh, this is basically what this uh, machine is doing. Yeah, you can see here on the other pictures. You see uh, some photographs uh, uh, before these instruments were fully developed. You you have some region here with a lot of instruments mesh. Uh, to uh, also magnets to, 
to guide and to measure the particles that come out when two protons collide head on. They, they, they split into a lot of, of, of particles like I, uh, like I showed. They go mainly into hadrons and, and then you look for what these hadrons are by instruments which are filling big regions. I mean, a human being is such a little small one here. It's really very big instruments. So I think like my finger or so here would, would be the height of a human being on this scale. Uh, and this is another instrument, CMS and so on. So you have uh, these uh, instruments and uh, now I am in, I, I think the plan of my talk is approximately this. And uh, I have already told you about this uh, LHC, what sort of machine it is, more or less. And it is uh, making records in many ways. There's the uh, uh, biggest uh, cooled region uh, down there to cool these magnets. And you have uh, the empty space where the proton run is about the best empty space in the solar system. But outside the solar system, it's even more empty. It didn't like it and complained about it. For instance, Einstein had very famous complaints. But uh, then we have this uh, nucleon, uh, no, no, we have this uh, uh, nucleus, and it consists of these so called nucleons, neutron and proton, which are called with a common name nucleons. And, uh, and, and that is, so to speak, a class of particles consisting of proton and neutron. But then there is a bigger class of particles that is called hadrons. And that contains the neutrons and the protons and a lot of other particles, which I um, already told you. There are some called pions. There are some called, uh, what? Yeah, that's, for instance, written here. Yes. <laughs> there are written some names of, of uh, hadrons, uh, this class of particles. There's, as you can see, the proton, there's a neutron, there's a pi minus, pi plus, pi zero, k meson, k minus, k zero, lambda, blah, 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 blah. There are so many that we have a whole little book about them. And uh, <coughs> these particles are actually produced in uh, collisions of, for instance, protons. Then you produce a lot of hadrons, uh, and uh, the proton is itself a hadron, and you also produce sometimes protons, as you can see, uh, if you collide protons on protons. And very seldomly, you produce other particles than hadrons. And now, since I'm saying hadron is a class, I have to tell you that there is at least one particle which you should uh, know because I mentioned the electron going around in the atom, which is not a hadron. So electron is not a hadron, but pions, kaons, proton, neutron are hadrons. And now one calls it that one is shooting hadrons, but it is in a bay a little bit uh, strange because this is like I would say, I am talking to mammals because there are lots of mammals here listening, but you are all from the same type. In the same way, you shoot these protons, and it is all protons in the hadron collider, but they are, of course, hadrons because that's also the proton. So, but it is to make sure that it is not the electron because one had another machine, electron positron collider, which collided electrons, and that. <coughs> Is, a, is another type of machine. So this is different. Anyway, so this is the, um, uh, this is the uh, hadrons. And then I, I should talk about this anti-miracle. And the anti-miracle, which I think is the best anti-miracle, the most mysterious happening, which could be like seeing a miracle, like seeing Jesus go on the water or so. Uh, uh, that is that there was another hadron collider machine. And this machine was called SSC. And uh, 
it doesn't really matter what this SSC was, but since I'm now mentioning it, I should say that it is, uh, uh, it is a meaning superconducting super collider. So this SSC means uh, superconducting super collider. Super conducting super collider. And that is because these machines use superconducting, uh, uh, they have the current running in superconducting, and then it was very big, and it was therefore a super collider. In a way, it was too big because that should have had, uh, that should be a very big ring. 40 something kilometers, very, very big. And then there should go protons one way and other hadron proton another way, I think. And then they should go with 20 of these uh, TV units, which is very big because this uh, machine we now started, that goes after plan with 7 TV against 7 TV. So this SSC would have been about three times very, very empty out there. So it's very difficult to, to compete with that, even for the people in LHC. Uh, I had some meeting with the Danes working there, and then one of the Danes, when I asked him, what are you doing? He said, uh, which means I do nothing. But that meant he was doing the vacuum making this <laughs> empty thing. So uh, uh, this is uh, um, the thing. If you, now the machine is working, but, but really, and it even worked a little bit before Christmas, but then it was stopped in Christmas, and then it is uh, working up. And now, since last week, it's working on half the plant energy. And perhaps there is a little uh, God uh, e effect has organized it only to go a half. Maybe the God of our theory don't like to do it uh, full speed. <laughs> well, I think this is not to be taken too seriously. But it means that, <laughs> that one, can, uh, one has measured something <coughs> with this low energy, which is not so impressive because it's essentially what one did with the previous machine. But now one is doing it proton on proton. The previous did it proton on antiproton. All particles have antiparticles. So sometimes the particle is its own antiparticle. For instance, the light particle, the photon. But the proton has an antiparticle, which is another particle than the proton. And in the foregoing machine uh, in CERN region, uh, one, one had this, but, but now one measured one. One cannot see everything that goes in, in this uh, uh, very forward direction. You, you have this empty space, and, and you better not fill it with too many detectors because then, uh, then you stop the particle. So you have to be a little careful. There, there are some problems there, but they can be partly solved. But the particles that come out in a reasonably big angle those you can see, and those you can measure. And therefore, if you want to measure how many particles there really come out, you, you cannot really measure them all because you can't measure the ones coming just in forward direction or just backward when they come, so to speak, follow the protons. But you can measure the ones that come to the side, and here's some little result of this one to show that at least one has done some data and one can one is now working, and they have published it, and so on. So it's a great thing. Referee has accepted it. It's from, yeah, OK. And then there's this uh, pseudo rapidity, which is a kind of longitudinal velocity. But I don't think a logarithm of it. Uh, it is not so important to, to, to know all these logarithms. So now I have uh, to say uh, about uh, what is our model, Nino Mies and mine. And, uh, and I can, 
I, I think I could uh, draw some uh, figures about what we are doing, but I think I it would be a little bit uh, a, a little bit just uh, almost painting in instead of formulas. But there is one formula I would like to present as a kind of painting because I don't think that I would even believe myself that I would make you understand it in 45 minutes. <laughs> but, uh, but this is the so-called Feynman pass integral. And Feynman is, uh, uh, is American physicist uh, uh, and he made this, which means he didn't really do it. Because <laughs> the, the truth is that it is due to one guy which is called Wenzel. And he invented, you see, this is a quantum mechanics formula. But he invented it before quantum mechanics. But, well, okay. So he, in a way, invented quantum mechanics before the other people who were more successful in getting recognized to have made the quantum formalism. But he invented this formalism which then, and then it wasn't even, uh, even Feynman, but it was actually Dirac. So, <laughs> anyway, but this is just not so important historical details. And, um, and, and the, the formula, I, I give very simplified uh, thing because it's a bit... Uh, So now uh, I should talk about CERN and an anti-miracle. Uh, I have written here LHC, but LHC is just the biggest machine and the most important machine at this institution CERN in uh, Geneva, which is paid by taxpayers of, uh, of many European countries, so uh, among which Denmark, for instance. And uh, this um, CERN has just got this machine working essentially last week. We, uh, we were celebrating by champagne and so that this machine had now come up to really work with CTEV. And now I owe you to tell TV that's sort of a, um, a mosquito energy. So it's very small. <laughs> But it's very big on the scale of the, a single proton, of which we have uh, 6 times 10 to the uh, 23 in one gram. That's very, very much if you give that energy that is comparable to a mosquito. So it's an enormously big energy for that. And this is a record. And now the machine is working, and uh, and it it is uh, very great things because the theoretical and experimental high energy physicists have been waiting and waiting for years to uh, to get the machine work, and I think somehow theoreticians have worked into more and more speculative things because. We have lacked experiments because there has been a very long time before this machine has come up. And this is a little bit due to that we think that there is a kind of God against it. <laughs> and, uh, and that is the theory of uh, Masao, Ninomiya and myself. And that is what has to do with this concept of anti-miracle. We want to say that machines which produce a particle called Higgs, which is to be produced by LHC. So far, I don't think it produced any. But that will come. <laughs> that will come. At least uh, one didn't see it. One didn't see any produced Higgs at all. Also not by a smaller machine, which probably has produced about 10,000 or so. But we really don't know because we didn't see any. So, <laughs> yeah, we, we can put this. Yeah, so I am, uh, this machine is called Large Hadron Collider. 
And large, of course, is just big. And collider means that you, uh, you collide things against each other. And hadron is a somewhat screwed notation for the proton, which is shooted. You should know that we are made from, let us, uh, we are made from protons and, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, electrons and so on. I think you, you, you know what we are made from, but to be completely <laughs> safe, yeah, you can see we are made from cells and so on, but don't forget about that. Then we are made from atoms. And here is sort of a symbolic drawing, which is in a way the picture by Niels Bohr of the atom. And uh, inside the middle, in the middle of the atom, there is the nucleus, and that consists of protons and neutrons, so-called nucleons. And uh, around it goes the electrons, and they are going in such orbits. But I think according to modern quantum mechanics, they are in mysterious way different places around the atom at the same time. But, uh, but that we don't have to think so much about uh, in, in the first go. That is quantum mechanics. Now at least you have heard the word quantum mechanics, which is uh, what the theory which we are working on all the time. So in a way we should know that, but uh, I think I will try to escape it in a in a relatively short talk. But you should have in mind that we have this mysterious theory that the creators of the theory